Right, here we go. We've got uh, GNS3 up and running. Um, I've got a fairly old version, I guess, by comparison to other people, 1.5.4, but it does everything I need it to do. It's sort a of dynamic style. Um, over here I've got a GNS3 VM. That's actually running, if we look down here, that's actually running as it is. Uh, sitting in here as a VMware workstation virtual machine. So that's a GNS3 virtual machine which is loaded. You can see that uh, I've done a video on that elsewise. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to add to the sort of host devices that I've got. I've got quite a few. These are Oracle VMs in the main. So they're part of VirtualBox. However, this one's not. This is Ubuntu 16.04. If I go into Preferences, I'll actually find that listed under Quemu VMs. So we can see I've loaded the Chromium VM and there's its, its disk image. That uh, does work. It will come up and run, no problems at all, because it's been installed as an appliance. And that's essentially what I can do within the realms of GNS3. So I can go away and import an appliance. Well, first things first, I'm going to need to go off to the marketplace. And this is the gns3.com forward slash marketplace forward slash appliances, as we can see here. So we're into the appliances. Now, there's a whole list of appliances we can actually use. Some of which, like the Cisco ones, you may actually need a Cisco IOS image. So whilst you can sort of bring down the sort of, if you like, the description of the actual um, machine that you're going to try and import, it won't necessarily work because you don't necessarily have the image. I did Ubuntu earlier. I'm going to do Firefox. I want why well, I want an image that has Firefox in it. <laughs> Funny enough, Ubuntu does anyway. So if I click on that, what I will find is we have the option to download. So we'll try and download that. And we can see it then obviously goes off to normal download. And if we show that in the folder, we can right click on that. I'm going to open this with WordPad just to have a look, see what it looks like. What you can see is it's actually a description of, um, you can see it's going to be Firefox. It's a guest. In fact, you can see here it's a tiny core Linux. So we have to see the Mozilla Foundation as expected, I suppose, within Firefox. And we can see who the maintainers are for this and the developers for this. Um, also, you'll find in here is it starts to then talk about the fact that this is a, a Quemu device. So that's where you expect to see it listed with adapters of one of that type. So we're looking at uh, a, a gigabit Ethernet in here. We've also got in here then the RAM that it's going to require, the architecture that it's running on. So whether you, whether you, you know, sort of 32-bit or 64-bit, 32-bit. Um, the console type is a VNC, so it'll have a special console type that we'll see in a moment once it's all sort of loaded in. We've then got this images or so there's more than one necessarily and we've got a file name here there's another file name down there um, that suggests then that there's two different types so if we have a look through here we should be able to see that it starts to talk about a particular image that's going to be required and we've got a different type of image down here so this this you'll see is reflected later when we start to try and import this. So it's actually this is the information it's working on. Uh, and again, what we can see here is the hard disk image. There's two of them that are available. So bear that in mind. There were two options that were listed in here uh, in order to gain access uh, to that. So let's just close that out of the way. That's the appliance that we're going to try and install. So we go back to GNS3, we go into import an appliance, so that's under file, import appliance. If we look down the list, well there's, there's the old Ubuntu one that we probably installed before. Got a Firefox one this time, so let's open that. You see this re reflects the information that's pulled out of that document, which we saw, the architecture of course. So Moving on, where are we going to put it? Well, put it in the GNS3 VM, that's where it's recommended to run. And then this is where we start to see where things might be missing. Not to worry, because we'll go away and find this. Remember there are two variants. So we've got the two variants that are listed here. Of course, they're different versions. 
So that's what we're seeing here. We can see that's reflected in the two different images. So if we're going to go for the latest, what we need to do is we need to import that. We may not have that, so we may need to download it first. So click the download button and it should go off and find the appropriate file. So here it goes, the download should start automatically, and indeed it does. So that's the image that we require. So let's save that. I'm saving it to downloads. And once that's saved, it's a relatively small image, so it should be no time at all. So it's just finishing off there. So that's loaded in, the images are here. So if we go back to GNS3, the image that we were looking for should now be available to be imported. So click on import and go and find the image. I tend to use date modified as the quickest way to find things. Now the image itself should be here, there it is. Now with the Ubuntu it was actually um, zipped up, so it's a Z7 zip file. So I went away and got the Z7 um, utility, installed that, unzipped the file because that's how it came down, unzipped it, it unzipped it to a directory which was 32-bit as the directory name or 64-bit depending upon which uh, one you got. Make sure you get the right one whether it's Oracle or VMware and, uh, and once you've got it available and unzipped you can then import it. So there's another step to sort of take. So we'll import. Uh, if it's successful and of course it should say ready to install rather than missing. So once you've, once you've got that line highlighted just click next. So would you like? Of course I would. That's the whole point of what I've been doing. And you can see the architecture that's going to sort of implement now surrounding this, the VM essentially, that we're going to have available and finish. So it's the next and a finish. So it's installing the appliance. Firefox has been installed. So if we have a look, we should see Firefox is listed. So let's pull that across. So the image missing on the server. Do you want to upload it? Yes. So that's sort of normal fodder, it doesn't take very long. Well, especially if you've got a solid state drive, it doesn't take very long at all. So there we go, it's in. So let's run it. So we need to start it, so let's right click and start. And then we look up here on the top right, we can see that it's actually running because it's gone green. So let's have a look. There's a, a normal sort of console connection coming in, is it? What's well, a tight VNC viewer here, look. And here it runs, and boppity bop, bit of a flash. Oh, another flash. Oh, that looks better. And it looks like we're in. Good. So that's that's free and available to us. Play. Now, here's here's an, um, another pointer that I came up with with some of the other ones. So that that's a running, fully available um, machine. We can install it onto a network, of course. Let's just go and get a simple sort of Ethernet switch. Uh, where do you want to run it? I want to run it on the VM, so make sure you select VM out of the two options uh, because they need to be in the same space otherwise it'll, it'll, it'll error at you and then come across the old connection icon on the left hand side connect that Ethernet port Oops. connect that Ethernet port to the switch and it should run it says oh here we go, sorry, yes, apologies stop him and go and plug his cable in once he stopped of course uh -huh. there's always something and start him up again he's up into flash anyway uh, being this device so let's go and make sure edit preferences come down into the Chrome UVMs and there it is listed so we can see the type of connectivity that we've got in terms of the number of connections, the number of CPUs that we're using, the amount of memory that we're going to use, and all that good stuff. Excellent. Right. Now there's one other thing, and I'm going to pull up in Downloads, and I'm going to pull up the Ubuntu um, GNS3A. So this is the file that's essentially telling it what to build. So I'm going to open that with WordPad. And you, you can use whatever you like, to be honest. And you can see it's the same sort of thing here for Ubuntu. Uh, there's a big long description. 
and then it goes into sorts of you know who, who's responsible for it but the other thing that was interesting inside these files was with, if there's any usernames and passwords that are required so you can see the username of osboxes and more importantly the password of osboxes.org so just a pointer that you might need to go and find the username and password and you can get that from that file or generally speaking the username and password are probably the same so if it displays the username tap that in first admin admin and those good things uh, are usually uh, some ways to get in so there we go we have an up and running appliance relatively straightforward but of course that's all running essentially inside this vm which is running down here look and that came up when we booted it up that being gns3 of course right well i hope that was useful and uh we'll see you again